Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer Prevention. I may get into a rant um, <clears throat> on preventive medicine versus functional medicine, a little bit of professional jealousy and uh, silos and debates. Uh, if I do actually get into a rant, which I doubt, uh, I know that's a big thing on YouTube these days. A lot of people are using those to sell, uh, sell views. But here's the issue. It's functional medicine versus preventive medicine <clears throat> and other specialties. As you might guess, uh, I get a lot of people and a lot of viewers assuming that I am in um, functional medicine. The reality is I may actually be there and I didn't know it for my whole career. <clears throat> Uh, now, again, if you're thinking this is all about um, just the technical stuff within, within and between specialties, here's the problem. Uh, <clears throat> there's a little bit of fiddling while Rome burns. And let me give you an example. Um, while specialties are throwing rocks at each other and trying to prove who's right and who's wrong, meanwhile, I still have patients coming into me on a daily basis who have had insulin resistance burning their arteries uh, and the tissues, their eyeballs, their uh, hearts, their brains. Um, and docs have been ignoring it. They, they often get a hemoglobin A1C and say, well, you know what? It's five and a half, 5.8. Let's keep an eye on it. You do have a touch of insulin resistance. That's, Again, fiddling while Rome burns. I'll give you another example of fiddling while Rome burns. We have spent trillions of dollars on researching dementia, looking for one drug which will, um, which will wipe out dementia. There's a fellow named Dale Bredesen. He's written a book called uh, The End of Dementia. And he makes a great point that, you know what? He uses the concept 36 holes in the roof. Now it's 45 or 72. But his point is, <clears throat> there, there are dozens of causes of dementia. If we continue to spend more and more money to research and look for one cause, one drug that will fix it all, then again, we're fiddling while Rome burns. So let's go back and look at uh, specialties and some of the arguments between them and how they can really become a distraction. <clears throat> I'll bear my own, uh, I'll wear my own prejudices and, and put them out here at front. ACPM, American College of Preventive Medicine. I trained in preventive medicine. I started as an ER doc, then got very frustrated that people shouldn't be having heart attacks at 60 years old and dying or having heart attacks and becoming uh, uh, disabled for the rest of their life or having dementia. This, they just shouldn't happen. So I said, even if it makes a bureaucrat out of me, I'm going to go get training. And it did make a bureaucrat out of me for a while. I, I did go to uh, Johns Hopkins and I trained in preventive medicine. We had more of a public health program there and less of a clinical prevention program. We, that's changed and it, the clinical prevention program is much stronger. But <clears throat> In that, in that, I went on to run the program in prevention at Hopkins, and you'll see me say, well, you know, if it's not clinical prevention, medi preventive medicine, then maybe it's not so good. Or if it's not Hopkins, if it's just Harvard or Mayo, then maybe it's not so good. You know, I'll do that too. But again, we don't want to get, let that get in the way of our providing good medicine to patients. So if you go to the website for the American College of Preventive Medicine, you say, you see one of the things right here, lifestyle medicine. Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of, speaking of prevention and lifestyle, and a lot of people say, well, you're a functional medicine doc. Here's why. The definition of functional medicine it, uh, for a lot of people is our body's function, what we eat, uh, how we sleep, uh, our exercise, our daily functions are our medicine. Well, if that's the case, then there's a heck of a lot of functional medicine in the preventive medicine field, myself being one of them.
Now here, if you go to the functional medicine website, you have a little bit different uh, definition, but I'm not so sure that it's, it's a different issue. There's a different uh, definition that they're looking at. Frankly, though, that definition, I think, is, um, is a valid one. Now, what is the Functional Medicine uh, Institute, the IFM, Institute for Functional Medicine? What is their definition of functional medicine? Well, theirs is, functional medicine asks how and why illness occurs and <clears throat> restores health by addressing the root cause. Well... If you're looking, I don't think the functional medicine guys have any uh, corner on that market, just like the preventive medicine guys don't have any corner on the lifestyle market, uh, lifestyle as medicine. So <clears throat> functional medicine guys, and this is Mark Hyman, who's on the board of IFM, uh, again, says that we look for root causes and we address the root causes. Now, <clears throat> Mark Hyman uh, appears to be a great doc to me. I can't remember if he's at Cleveland or Mayo. He, he certainly wasn't at Hopkins, though. I can tell you that. Uh, no comment. So <clears throat> let's go back and look at the differences here. Um, well, well, let me just make one other comment. So <clears throat> at uh, in my position at Hopkins, when I was running the program, I was very fortunate to have, and I'm going to brag for a second, I've trained... Um, Docs that went on to be EIS officers at the CDC, Epidemic Investigation Services guys. Um, state health officers for states like New Jersey, big uh, competitive areas. Country health officers, you know, the Secretary of Health for countries. Um, two of the recent past presidents of the American College of Preventive Medicine. So I know the area, I know the docs, and, and let me give you another side of this issue. Uh, when I first started finding out about functional medicine, I called a few of these leaders, and I just, oh, with some of them, I got uh, pure vinegar and frustration. It's like, Ford, don't listen to these guys. They're, they're selling a snake oil. They don't, they don't look at research. They just make stuff up. Okay, I got it. There's the professional uh, debate, jealousy, and frustration, and maybe some of the leaders have to play that role. But let's go back. And let's look at good medicine and look, let's look what differentiates a good doc and what doesn't. Functional medicine versus uh, preventive medicine versus primary care, family practice. And what's the best for our patients? So cutting edge research. Uh, I know, I've met and worked with plenty. Uh, Hundred because of my my roles in life, I've worked with and supervised hundreds, over a thousand docs. Family practice, internal medicine, functional medicine, none of them have a corner on the market for looking at cutting edge research. How about recognition that there may be multiple causes of a problem? For example, like dementia. Again. I've, I've met and worked with functional medicine docs, preventive medicine docs, family practitioners, all of whom know and recognize this problem. So there's nobody that's got a corner on that market either. I've also worked with docs who didn't understand that. The reality, at least with the dementia problem, is probably more of a big pharma issue. Big pharma wants a drug that wipes it all out because if they ever find one of those, they will make more money than they'll ever be able to spend. But, again, that doesn't appear, to, a single drug to fix dementia doesn't appear to be in the cards right now. So, <clears throat> frustration with uh, that problem and, and pharma focusing us on looking for a single drug. Again, multiple specialties are in that same area. Recognition that our function, our daily lifestyle, is often the key to prevention. Again, that yeah, you see it on the preventive medicine website, but you're going to see that with functional medicine docs, preventive uh, medicine, family practitioners, you name it. Let me just share, um, uh, again, another story. 
My family has often called me Dr. Three Days. And that's not a compliment, or at least it wasn't a compliment in their view. So let me give you where that, a, a story about where that comes from, a typical story. So uh, one of them comes to me and says, Daddy, I've got a sore throat. Uh, and I'd look at it and I'd say, yeah, you know, your throat's red. Uh, there doesn't appear to be significant pus. Um, I'd ask them about other stuff too, ear problems, uh, fever, things like that. At the end of that conversation, I would say, as you often should with uh, a sore throat, yep, you've got a, an infection. It's probably a virus and you don't need an antibiotic. Let's wait three days and look at it again. Again, my family wanted an antibiotic and I wouldn't give it to them. So they called me Dr. Three Days. And again, it was they weren't happy with me for that. Now, <clears throat> is that... Which doctors do that? Which doctors practice good medicine, whether it's um, a focus on uh, antibiotics or, or doing the right thing for the patient, even if the patient sometimes doesn't, doesn't want that, Help, helping to educate the patient on what's the right thing? Well, that's ER docs, family practitioners, internal medicines, and internal medicine, functional medicine docs. Again, nobody's got a corner on that market. And to, to imply or say that we do is really, again, a distraction. Now, back to the comment from some of the uh, preventive medicine docs. Well, they don't look at the research. Failure to acknowledge that research, uh, research failure to use it, basically just telling the patient, well, here, take these grape nuts because we think that works. And I know that works. Again, I've seen that in every area. And let me give you an example. In our area, we recommend niacin. Uh, we recommend niacin to improve a lot of uh, lipids, uh, cholesterol test functions. There is actually a good bit of research around niacin. There's actually some research that um, is both pro and con niacin. And the reality is a good doctor will tell the patient, here's the research out there. Here's what I would recommend. And the choice is yours. Actually, there are good doctors in all of these specialties. Thank you for your attention.